Well, good evening and welcome to Catopia. I hope that your Wednesday is off to a fantastic start. Uh, here in just the first couple of minutes, I'll pull up my stream on both Facebook and, um, and the Twitch chat. That way, if you have something to chime in with or you just want to say hello, uh, you've got the chance to do so. All right. So we are live in all the good places. So it is Wednesday already, and you may have noticed that I have not done a ton of paintings this week. I have actually been a little bit busy, which I know is very strange in these times, but um, I've been teaching for an Upward Bound program during the day, and that means that all my other requirements, other things that I need to do, uh, including taking an online class um, for license renewal, for teaching, um, and well, pretty much just all my other regular life things get done later in the evening. So you may notice that behind me a couple of my paintings have in fact fallen down. Uh, they are really bears to get stuck to the wall. So I've actually resorted to using duct tape. I don't know if that, I bet that's bad for the wall. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's bad for the wall. Uh, but that's what I've been using to try to get them to stay up a little bit better. So here's what I am up to tonight. So two nights ago, I did a practice run of The Footbridge, one of Bob's episodes from season 24. And uh, it's episode 12, and so this is the one we are going to take a look at today. But this time I'm going to do it in oils. So I've done it in acrylic. I'll be doing it in acrylic again tomorrow night with my students from Upward Bound. Uh, we'll be running a special, special time with them. But tonight I'm going to do it in oil because I'm curious how it's going to look. So I've already got my... Hey, welcome back. Certainly so glad you could up. join us today. It's a fantastic day here, and I hope it is wherever you're at. So I tell you what, let's start out today and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint hey, along Mallory. with us. Hey, Mallory. Welcome to the that, stream. Let me show you what I've got. Do you have a niece or nephew yet? Done up here. have my standard old pre-stretched double prime canvas, and today I've just covered it with a very thin, even coat of liquid white. So it's all wet and slick and ready to go, so shoot, let's just do a... Just, just do a little painting. It's a lot of fun. I thought we'd start with this little tiny brush, the little, the little two-inch brush. And let's go into a small amount of Indian yellow today. What the heck? Just a little tiny bit of Indian yellow. And we'll go right up here. And very lightly. I'm just going to make some little crisscross strokes. I thought maybe today we'd just, we'd just do a, a very simple little painting that just makes you feel good. Just a very nice, warm little painting. Maybe... Maybe a little scene that's back in the woods and stuff. I'm such a... Not just yet. A week from today. Okay. Okay. That's good stuff. <laughs> mm. Have you picked a Bob Ross painting that you're going to do for your brother just yet? Fanatic for nature and the woods and all the trees and bushes and stuff. That's really what I like to paint. So let's do that today. Without cleaning the brush, maybe the least little touch of the yellow ochre. Not much. Very, very little color. I want to keep this guy quite subdued and quiet, so you don't really notice it unless you look for it. There we go. Shoot, maybe, maybe the least little touch of the bright red, too. It doesn't matter. But very, very small amount. Just a little pink in the sky. I don't, I don't want to set the sky on fire, and very quickly you can do that. Just want to give it a, a nice little pinkish hue. Maybe a little touch more over in here. There. Something like that. All right. And just gently going across the entire canvas. <laughs> that sounds good. I like that you're at least considering doing it for your brother. That's really nice. I think that's important. Uh, in fact, the, I don't know why, but I haven't sent one to my sister yet. So that seems strange. But I should send them one that looks, that looks like Oregon. Because I don't think any of Bob's paintings are ever going to look like Iowa. Um, but the, uh, guest speaker for Upper Bound, um, for our first convocation Monday night, uh, she didn't exactly ask me to send one, but she asked if I would ship one to Florida. So I'm thinking about taking one of my small ones, um, and basically mailing it to her in the, like a padded envelope type thing. Um, I think that that might be a nice surprise for her. Just blend out all the little brush strokes. There we go. Okay, maybe... Maybe we'll wash this brush. What the heck? I just really like to wash brushes. It keeps my keeps my crew here on their toes. 
<laughs> All right. Now then, good clean dry brush. I'm gonna go right into a little bit of the little bit of the midnight black. Don't want a whole lot of paint. Just a little. All right. Let's go back up in here, and right on the top, I'm gonna take a little bit of that black and begin making little little crisscross strokes still. Something about like so. There we go. Maybe here and there there's a happy little little floater in there, wherever you think they should be. That's exactly where they should be. There, a little bit more color on the brush. We'll go right in my cat. But this is just midnight black. Let's right. knock off any excess color there because I want to keep it quite dark. This one's going to be black and blue. And maybe. Why not? Why not have another little cloud right about here? And all we're doing is just sort of tapping downward with this two inch brush. Maybe this little cloud. Shoot, maybe it comes way on out here. I don't know. Blue out there. Blue and yellow. In your world, you can do anything sky. that you want to do. Sky. Any old thing that you want to do. Oh, put boy. another one there. Maybe over in here on this side. Maybe there's a couple more over here. Just whatever. Painting should be very individual. Everybody will see nature through different eyes. Yep, I just made a green stack. That's what Not you bad. should paint, the way you see it. I'm wash the old brush off again. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and there we go again. Now then, with a clean, dry brush, and very gently here, I'm just going to blend all this together. Just blend it all together. Isn't that a fantastic way of making some little clouds that just jump right out at you? And you can do this. Even if you've never painted before, this you can do. Okay. This you can do. We try to make painting simple enough that everybody can do it and, okay. and really achieve fantastic results, even with very limited amounts of practice. There. And, of course, the more you practice, the easier it gets and the better you get. Mm -hmm. I'm I can confirm. That is correct, Bob. That is correct. It also helps if you listen and perhaps follow his instructions. Anyway, okay. Take a little. Let's use a little black. Maybe I'll put the least little touch of, least little touch of thalo blue into it. Also, mostly black though. But a little bit. I'm gonna have a little water in this painting. So, we'll we'll have water maybe right here. I don't know. It really doesn't matter at this point. You just put in some color and whatever we don't want to be water, we'll just paint right over it because this is our world and we literally, literally can do anything that we want to do in this world. You have total and complete power here. There. Now then. I tell you what, we'll just keep using that same old brush. I'll just put a little bit more of the black on it. So it has black and a least little touch of blue, but mostly black. And not a lot of color on the brush. Okay. I like blue Maybe water. Maybe in our world back I in here. Blue. Let's just do blue. Blue. something like it. In fact, I'm going to wipe a little of that paint off a little more. No, that's better. I want it very quiet. Just take the side of the brush and put the indication of some little things that live way back in the distance. Little indications of trees. I don't want a lot of detail. I don't know what color this is, Bob. Black and blue? Put a little bit so. more of the black on it. So it has black yes. and a least little touch of blue, but mostly black. And not a lot of color on the brush. Okay, maybe in our world back in here, let's just do doop, something like that. In fact, I'm going to wipe a little of that paint off a little more. No, that's better. I'm blue on the yellow. I'm worried already, Bob. Oh, Bob. So let's take the side of the brush and I'll put the indication of some little things that live way back in the distance. Little indications of trees. I don't want a lot of detail. It's too far away. Too far away. Just want some little indications here and there. There. Wherever. Sometimes you can just tap downward. And if you want to make them look like little, maybe little evergreens far away, you can just do the brush like that. There we go. Softer and softer and softer till they just basically disappear out here. Very quiet, very subdued. There we are. Okay, now then. I'm going to take a clean and very dry brush 
and I want to just tap the base of this. I want to create the illusion of mist down here and soften all this up. Just soften it up. Then lift gently upward. See how soft that is now? And that tapping and lifting will push all those little things far, far back in the distance. And you can go right over the top of some of them to really soften them. There. Okay. We're going to see very, very little of that, so I'm not interested in a lot of detail back there at this point. Later on, we'll worry about it, but not now. Not now. We just have fun. Now. Right into a little bit of black. Maybe there's a indication here and there. Just a few little bushes a little closer. So they'll be a little darker. But yeah, he made a lot more trees than I realized, I guess. He was like going over. Yeah, he wants to make them all match up there. Okay. I had kind of a stressful day with um, just guitar issues. I ordered a used guitar from a seller on Reverb and it came broken and the seller is saying it broke in shipping, which is neither here nor there um, for me anyway. And so, you know, I'm trying to help him file the claim because the, the shipper has to file the claim with UPS that, you know, it got damaged. Anyway, so I'm doing everything I can to help him because what I want him to do is um, give me a partial refund so I can pay to repair it and he can deal with UPS, and I get to keep the guitar, albeit repaired, um, for what I paid for. Um, yeah, the seller is trying to balk a little bit, like, well, I don't want to give you a refund, partial refund, until I hear back from the UPS about whether they will approve my claim. Well, UPS takes, like, 10 to 15 days to approve or deny a claim. And fortunately, Reverb, the location where I purchased, you know, like eBay for musical instruments. Um, fortunately, Reverb protects the buyer, so I can send the whole kit and caboodle back within seven days um, for a full refund, including the shipping to return it. So, like, I'm pretty well protected, but if I can get the seller to pay for the repair, then I would keep it. I'd be happy to keep it. So, not that I had to threaten him exactly, but I had to remind him that I can't wait for UPS to decide if they're going to pay your claim. Like, I'm asking you to do the right thing for me so that this mess can be settled and then you can duke it out with UPS. Anyway, it's a whole thing. Anyway, fortunately, the repair is only $250. Like, it's not that much compared to the fact that new, the guitar is $2,400. Um, it's not how much I paid for it, but um, really, $250 is not that bad given that they have to detach the entire neck. So it's glued and otherwise forced on. Um, and these things never come apart. Like, I've never seen this. But anyway, so they have to do a complete neck reset. So the fact that it's only 250 is impressive. So I'm trying to trying to get the stress out with, with Bob. But, you know, we haven't been beating the brush enough, apparently. We haven't been taking our frustrations out on the canvas enough. This was not a good episode for that, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just tired. Hey, Kari, welcome to the stream. <laughs> but once again, I'm not looking for a lot of detail yet. Mm. Too soon. When we get further into the foreground, then we'll begin seeing more. Right now, I'm just interested in getting a few little things up here. There. Something maybe about like that. Okay. Now, I thought today... Let's have a little bit of fun. Shoot, maybe we'll, maybe we'll paint something a little different. Get a brush nice and clean and ready. Maybe in our world, way back here, I sort of visualize these and, and allow the visualizations to happen in your mind. Maybe we'll have water running back through here. And, and maybe, mm -hmm. there's a little, maybe there's a little bridge that goes right over the water. So let's do the bridge first, and then we'll put things in the foreground. Start with Van Dyke Brown, maybe even a little dark sienna mixed with it. Cut off our little roll of paint, and it should live right out of the edge of your knife. See there? So, Kari, since you're just joining, I am painting the exact same acrylic picture I painted two nights ago, but this time I'm painting it in oil. Um, so it's the same episode that I'll be going through um, with the you beers and you. Now, where should our bridge be? Let's have it right about here. You have to make your first major decision, and all you do is just touch. 
that little roll of paint will pull right off your knife. There. Maybe that's just the top rail of the bridge. And you could make any kind of bridge you want. I think today I'll just make a very simple one. Easy little one to do, even if you've never done a bridge. This is very easy. There. Here's the, here's the bridge's floor or the bottom of the bridge. So it's a little thicker than the rail up there. And then, okay. and let's see. We'll put some little, some little support doers in here. We'll put one in, and maybe there's some little. Yep. See them. See there. We're just using the small edge of the knife, or you could just use a small knife. I'm just too lazy to pick it up. I'm already using my small knife, there. so I've got troubles. Little trouble. Looks like. As a kid, I used to, with string, make Jacob's ladders. This looks like that, sort of. Maybe this is Jacob's bridge. Who knows? I don't even know who Jacob is. There. Well, it's See biblical that? Jacob. I don't know the, the string toy, the Jacob's ladder toy. I'm not super familiar with that, but... It's a Bible story, I get. That looks weird. I didn't make it wide enough or I made it too wide. One of the two things happened there. That easy. The old knife will do fantastic things. We'll put one little arm right here. Now, yeah, my take a little weird. white, a little bit of dark sienna, maybe even a little touch of the bright red into it. Ooh, that's a nice one. Put a little yellow ochre too. A little roll of paint. And right up here on the top, the lights is hanging down on top of our little bridge. Doom. So we have a little highlight right up here on top. Oh. Right there. And here and there, and there and here. See, right there. Maybe a little coming on this side of the post. Maybe our light's coming from the left today. It's up to you, wherever. Wherever. Wherever you want your son to be, that's where it can be in the painting. Hope you saw my son in the last program. The devil's quite a character, isn't he? He really can paint. Thank you, Simon. As of the date of this taping, I think he's 24 years old. He travels all over the country just teaching the painting method that you see here. Aww. Maybe if he gets to your town doing demonstrations or something, he works with a lot of the PBS stations, except maybe you'll get out to see him. There we go. Sadly, after Bob him. passed... No one ever heard from Steve Ross ever again. Like, he just disappeared. He doesn't teach, he doesn't paint, at least not publicly anyway. Um, and, weirdly enough, he doesn't own any part of Bob Ross, Inc. So, Steve Ross was Bob's only child, and Bob's will, or whatever, I guess, um, the entire business went back to his business partner, Annette Kowalski. Anyway, so that's a sad story. <laughs> Ask him a little bit and tell him I sent you. There. Now, we need something underneath there. Let me get the small knife. We need something to keep this bridge out of the water. Right now, it would fall right in the water because there's no little support doers. Maybe. Maybe there's a little post that lives right there. I guess you need a pretty good sized post to hold up the bridge, so we'll make it a little bigger. Something like that. A little bit of our little highlight color. Not much. Touch. There. Sort of gives an indication of a little, little doer there. Maybe we need some little support brackets on it. There. Oh, I wish the bridge was really that easy to build. Let's reflect that right into the water. Grab it. Pull down. And we'll take our two-inch brush. Wait, what just happened? Grab it. And pull. That yeah. easy to oh. build. Let's reflect that right into the water. Grab it. Okay, I've never seen him do a reflection quite like that, so that was kind of crazy. There's some support doers. Looks good. And then... Oh, 
Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm not feeling great about that. Pull down. And we'll take our two inch brush, pull that down, and just go across. That easy. You just make a little reflection there. And that looks good. And we'll take a little bit of the liquid white and mix it with a little of the titanium white. I don't just know why I would a little that. thinner than normal. And we'll put a little ripple of water right around the foot there. Sort of cleans it all up and gives the impression that maybe the water's moving slowly, very slowly by this little bridge. A little, little slow river stream here. Big old fish is laying right under there and resting, taking life easy. I like to fish. Though I'm not a very good fisherman. Shoot, I catch the old fish and put a band-aid on his mouth and pat him on the tutu and put him back in the water and, and wish him well. And maybe maybe I'll be lucky and get the chance to, to catch him again one day. Okay. Take a little black, brush and blue, phthalo green. Put some crimson in there. Black. See that white stuff one more water. time. Fish and put a band-aid on his mouth and pat him on the tutu and put him back in the water and, and wish him well. And maybe maybe I'll be lucky and get the chance to, to catch him again one day. Okay. Take a little black, brush and blue, phthalo green. Put some crimson in there. I will not say that tomorrow night. <laughs> Keep rubbing until it goes away. I've got too much white there and I can't seem to undo it. Okay. There we go. Mix them all up. I'll mix a pretty good pile of paint. I'm going to mix some evergreen trees. What the heck? And some big bushy trees. Mm -hmm. and we're going to wipe off the knife. Brown. There. Brown. Let's start maybe. Hmm. Ready Red. to make a big decision? No maybe in our world. Just sort of stand back and look. Maybe. Yep. Right about there. We'll have a big bush. I'm going to push both ends of this bridge back into the bushes so we don't have to worry about it. Right in there. And maybe there's a big, tall bank right here. Oh, there we go. Where did the bush there's come a, from? It didn't. The Made a bush. Ends of this bridge back into the bushes so we don't have to worry about it. Right in there. And maybe there's a big, tall bank right here. There we go. brown and white. Just highlight a little bit here and there. Maybe I'll put a lot of bushes on there so we don't really care at this point. We don't yeah, even know. Some of this will show. Back and forth here. I'm using some paint that I had, like I had too much paint on my palette one night and so I put it in some um, wax paper and like a cool whip dish and boy it's um, it's chunky. It's, it's chunky. Chunky. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so like little stair steps, I guess. You want to walk down into the river. A lot of it won't. Now we can come back in here and drop mm -hmm. in the indication of just of all kinds of... Well, I'll tell you what, let's just bring it right on around here. Let your imagination go. Just let that old imagination go. Maybe it comes... There. What the heck? Get crazy. <laughs> That's what makes it fun. What makes it fun? There we are. Now, we was going to paint some evergreens a long time ago, and I got carried away with rocks and stones and all those things, so... Yeah. Let's make it... In our world, there lives, does now, the little evergreen tree right there. Use a the corner of the brush as you work down the tree. Push harder and harder, forcing the bristles to bend downward. 
There they go. A little bit of phthalo green in there just gives it sort of a oh, gives it sort of a flavor, almost like blue spruce, which is one of the most beautiful evergreen trees there ever was. Maybe I'll just put a couple in here. You know, it's interesting over the years and the long time we've been doing this period, I've had so many little creatures and stuff. I thought maybe today I just, when I'm putting these trees on, I'm just going to put them. I'll just show you a quick bunch of little photographs of some of my little creatures and yeah. let you take a look, see, maybe you'll. I'm digging that tree. Really trying to work on improving my evergreens. I feel like they did not improve at the same rate as what everything else kind of improved. Okay. Now, granted, one side of the brush is better than the other. Oh boy. Don't like that evergreen. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay. Continue. Continue trying. That's a nice big one. Pushing down, and yet, like, I don't know, it just makes this gorgeous shape. It doesn't look like a crazy shape. That's what I get. <laughs> I remember some of them because they're very special to me. They play a very important role in my life. I just absolutely love the little devils. That's Squirrely Girly Brown. <laughs> She's quite a character. And it's Danielle, the, the crow. He belonged to Ann Young, one of the bird ladies that lives very close to me. There, he's a character. He's all grown up and gone now. There's Carmen Shaw with her deer. Hey, Bob Storer, we went sail fishing together. Of course, we let him go too. And there's my little raccoon. Didn't he something? There's another picture of Squirrely Girly. She's something else. She's. What a sweet piece of soul. If more people would help rehabilitate squirrely girlies and let them back into the wild, the world would be a great place. Still with me, squirrely mm. girly. Mm. She's almost ready to turn loose now. Almost ready. We do not keep any of these animals. We don't try to make pets out of them because they are wild creatures and God meant for them to, to be outside. The only thing that I want to do and all the people who help them is just to give them the best possible chance to survive. A lot of times they get orphaned or hurt. And that's all we're trying to do. That one good. That was my best tree. Not even all the way on here. <laughs> there. Oh, we got more, more chances. Okay, maybe a little tree right there. Yeah, because I really think wild animals, they should be wild. They should be wild. But sometimes, like everything else, they need a little help. And if I can help them and Give them a little head start in life. That's fantastic. It's fantastic. There we go. But some of them I get very attached to. It's awful hard to turn them loose after a while. There we are. I guess my love of animals was probably instilled by my mother. She always loved animals. and She helped me raise a little squirrely girl, in fact. Her and Annette and I... Gorgeous. Between the three of us, we got it in the middle of the night, and we fed them, and we took care of them, and, and it's very rewarding. I'm going to take a little bit of that same color. Maybe we'll have a little lamp that comes right down here. we got to do something with all this, so I'll just tap in some dark color. Just using the old two-inch brush. And you could fill this up here with a, yeah, you could use a paint roller, doesn't matter. Just a, it's sort of a good place to practice and get the feel of your brush. Maybe open here, this comes, we'll have this one come right down to the edge of the water. And don't worry if you get something in there because we need a reflection under there anyway. In fact, if, if it didn't happen automatically, you'd have to go back in there and paint it. So don't worry about it. See, you just grab it and pull it down. You need that reflection to set it right down into the water and go across. That easy. There we are. And then grab our little 
same brush it had that color on it. The sensor's blue in it, and green in it. We can go right in the yellow, yellow ochre, blue Indian yellow. And I'm going to see that one more time. And then grab our little fan brush that had that. Sensor's blue in it, and green in it. We can go right in the yellow, yellow ochre, blue Indian yellow. Can make a nice dark green color. Maybe I'll get leaving a little black. Yes, little sorry. This too, like. is the one that we are doing in acrylic tomorrow night. Yeah, and I, I gotta admit, so this is the first time I've done it in oil, but I've done it twice in acrylic, and I've watched the episode probably four or five times now, and. I just love this. I love how this is looking in oil. Like, it looks great in acrylic, too, but um, I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Ooh, that's what I was looking for, sap green. There, let's go back up in here. Now then, let's begin highlighting some of these trees. Just figure out which one's in the foreground, which one's in the background. Do the one that's in the background first. There, and then let the other one come right over the top of it. Here we are. There's another one. Just like so. All you're doing is tapping, letting the bristles bend slightly downward. Slightly downward. There. Let them get darker and darker as they work downward. There you are. Okay, let's go on the other side. we got to give these little trees something, too. We don't want them left out. That old tree would be upset with us. We don't want that. I did the one on both sides because I think I want the one in the middle to be in front of the other two. So you do those first and then do that one. And it'll give the impression that it's it's in the foreground. There we go. She didn't know I was going to paint a whole forest today, but we did. It's all right. It's a lot of fun. We got a lot of practice, so it wasn't wasted. Take an old two-inch brush go right into that greens, the sap green, the Indian yellow, yellow ochre, a little touch of the bright red, and now and then only. Load some color right onto the bristles. Let's go up here. Now then, let's begin making big decisions here. I have a brush for this. Uh, let's have a little grass a area comes right down to the case. There. Just... I can find a special brush. I started having really, really good luck with my old like one and a half inch brush that I had bought from Walmart, oddly enough. Like it's officially not even, oh there it is. It's officially not even like a real, real, you know, artist's brush. But I started having really good luck with this. It's, yeah, one and a half inches. Okay. We have the same green color. Okay, I thought I was having really good luck with it because I was doing it on a <laughs> black canvas. Everything feels like I have better luck when it's a dark canvas. Tap. And the more you tap, the more that base color that you'll pick up, and the darker it'll become. It'll just disappear after a while. You have to decide. There. Do this over and over till it gets just as soft as silk. Looks like velvet grass laying there if you want to. And the more you tap it, the softer it'll become. All right. Just layer after layer after layer. There. Okay. Right down here. Little something. Let's go on the other side and put a little over there. Maybe it comes right down like that. It sneaks right out of those trees. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. Tell you what. Take some Van Dyke Brown Dark Sienna. And let's go put a little indication of a little soil, a little dirt, right down here at the water's edge. Something maybe about like that. I don't want a lot. Just a little. Just a little. A little bit brown and white. Give it a little tiny bit of highlight. Don't much. And I can take a little, little fan brush.
brush and just pop in some little bushes right down here. Brings it all together. Okay. <clears throat> Stuff happened while I was not watching. chunk there. Okay. Yeah, I need to put a lot of, a little bit. I kind of would prefer if it came down, so I'm actually going to add, I'm going to add more. I'm going to go off book here, Bob. You taught me, you taught me too well. Too, too well. Okay, and then, like he was talking about, with some, get to do things in my hands. Too many dirty brushes tonight. Okay. I would like a brighter color, but let's we'll see what we're going to get. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Welcome to the stream. Uh, if you're still watching, because this is going to be about 20 seconds in the future when you started watching. Um, this is the same painting that we're doing tomorrow night, except tonight I'm doing this in oil. And tomorrow night we'll be doing it in acrylic. So I'm looking forward to that. The kids are pretty jazzed. I wore my Bob Ross shirt today, of course, for obvious reasons. And then um, I have my other Bob Ross shirt for tomorrow. So it's been a fantastic week. In fact, I have felt more like myself this week than I probably felt in the last three months. Um, yeah, hey, Hawkeye Foot. <laughs> uh, so I've got my Twitch followers that watch as well. And um, yeah, this one is turning out pretty much awesome so far. Be good if I played Bob. Here we go. A little bit of the liquid white and the firm white mixed together. There, we can come right back in here. Just put us in a little, little watery line there. Okay, shoot. I need a play way to get to this little bridge back here. So let's take a little Van Dyke dark sienna mixed together and just put the indication of a little, little path right in there. Choom. Take some white, maybe even a little bright red, a little yellow ochre. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is the first time I've seen Hawkeye foot in a couple days. Uh, so Hawkeye Foot and Carl the Llama, uh, a former student and a student of mine, have asked me to do a Bob Ross painting on a piece of wood. Uh, so I'm excited for them to get that thing cut down to how they want to use it to make an end table or like a side table. And then I'm going to prep the surface and I'm actually going to put an oil painting on top of this piece of wood. So I'm pretty pretty jazzed about that because, I mean, I've, I've looked up some, you know, helpful tips on how exactly this is going to work and... Uh, I'm, I'm pretty jazzed. I'm pretty jazzed about it. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put a little path right here. Beside the steps, I guess. Beside the steps. Yeah, I guess. Supposed to be tilted? I don't know. I got nothing. Dark sienna mixed together. Oh, that kind of and just put the indication of a little little path right in there. Choom. Take some white, maybe even a little bright tree. red, a little yellow ochre. Oh, I don't want this thing. this thing goes all the way down. Be brave. Barely touch. It's letting it sort of graze across there. Right, the good news is. There. That's always good news. Right on now. All right. Here we go. Now then. Take our brush with a little grassy colors and just bring some right up to the edges here. Okay, not ready, Bob. Not ready. Yeah. Okay, let's get. <laughs> there are some paintings that I get really, really jazzed about. I am pleased. 
I am very pleased. Oh, we gotta add some little something about like yeah, it. Yeah, it kind of makes this out to look uh, like a, a little shelf. more distinct bushes as we get closer. We'll use the fan brush and just pop them in, pushing up for the brown. There we go. Now, let's find a nice one inch brush. I'll dip it right into a little bit of a little bit of the liquid mm -hmm. white. I'll go into some green and yellow. Pull it in one direction. Now, let's take put some nice highlights on all these little things here. Start with the one mm -hmm. as usual. That's the farthest away and work forward. Always working forward. Mm -hmm. Let them just hang right out over the bank here. I like yellow at this point. There, there. Yeah, all Mud. kinds of little things. Yeah. One little bush at a time, but don't get greedy. <laughs> I know it's tempting. I know it's tempting. One at a time. That's mm -hmm. all we're looking for. Just drop them in. Maybe oh, even crap. over here. Shoot Somebody got in the red. One little, two little, three little <laughs> bushes right there, whatever you want. There's something to sort of break it up a little. Maybe back in here, there's a few. Can even have one or two right in here. There we are. Let's grab an old fan brush. Shoot. You know me. All of a sudden, I ended up with <laughs> Always little red big tree. in there. Hang on. Hang on, Bob. Well, maybe back in here. Little three little bushes right there, whatever you want. Oh! Really? I think I went one the wrong way. Bush. There we go. I wasn't sure what happened. <laughs> Panic. Tree is jacked. <laughs> okay. This foliage business is always the hardest, hardest part for me. So, let's in there. More sap free. More sap free. Oh, boy, too much sap free. No, not bad. Not bad. But don't get greedy. I know it's tempting. No, it's tempting. One at a time. That's all we're looking for. Just drop them in. Maybe even over here. Shoot to one little, two little, three little bushes right there, whatever you want. There's something to sort of break it up a little. Maybe back in here, there's a few. He's just the king of using white. even have so one or two right in here. Give that a specific look. There we are. Let's grab an old fan brush. Shoot. You know me. <laughs> I think we're about to drop in a big old bush. Yep. Oh, I got some stuff over there I need to put in. Okay, okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, this. That looks like nothing. Good job, good job. <laughs> yeah, that's the same color as what I put over there, so... That's a bad bush. Always have to have a big tree. Let's take some of the browns, both browns. Here's your bravery test. Make those little noises. There's a little tree. And there's his little brother. So we gotta give him gotta give him a little friend there. Don't want him to get lonely out here. I'm just gonna touch a little highlight to the edge of these little rascals. Just a little. We'll take our little script liner brush and dip it into a lot of paint thinner. Yep, totally missed my tree. Don't worry. Nathan's. He did this with a brush. Yeah. Right. Let's take some of the browns, both browns. Here's your bravery test. Right, Make those little bush. noises. There's a little tree. And there's his little brother. So we 
gotta give him, gotta give him a little frill there. We won't even get lonely out here. I'm just gonna touch a little highlight to the edge of these little rascals. Just a little. I'm gonna take our little script liner brush. I'm gonna dip it into a lot of paint thinner. I want it to be as thin as ink. Very, very thin. Look at that, it just absolutely drips right off there. Nice soupy. Okay, let's go up in here. Now with that, we can come back in here because it's a very thin paint. It'll slide. We can just run it right over the top of all these little doers. Put us all kind of little branches and limbs and things like that on here. Maybe these old trees, maybe they're dead. Maybe we just got naked limbs out here. Yeah, that pretty much was a here coming there. airplane. <sighs> If you want to put a few leaves on, you certainly could. It's up to you. I think today I'm going to just leave them sort of hanging around. Something about like that. Something about like that. There. And you could just take a knife and here and there and there and here. Scrape in a few little sticks and twigs and things like that. And you're about to the point you have a little finished painting. Hope There's you try this one. Right you'll, really, yeah. you'll, you'll enjoy it. So give it a try and send me a photo. Let me see how you do with it. And from all of us here, I'd like to wish you happy painting. And God bless, my friend. Okay. Let's look at that. That is gorgeous. Oh, here about two weeks ago, my husband came upstairs after playing a video game, and he's like, okay, here's where I think Bob has you. <laughs> and he proceeded to list like two or three things that Bob does, quote, better than me. And I'm like, the fact that he only came up with two or three things was actually very impressive, because I'm like, um, I can name a lot of things Bob is better at than I am. Uh, but it just kind of cracked me up that, like, he had been thinking about this. Like, it was really you know, on his mind that, um, that I wasn't as good as Bob yet on, in some ways. I can't remember what the things were, but, uh, it just cracked me up. Oh, you know, I think I forgot some liquid white. Um, I don't have liquid white now. Liquid white over here. I don't know when we did that, but I, I missed it. Like some, I looked and Bob had some right there. There we go. Looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and sign this one. It's been a while. I keep reading to sign them and then kind of felt like, oh, maybe, maybe I don't need to. There we go. Right here in the corner. Right by the little bush. Okay. And I think Bob put in a couple of sticks and twigs. Put a couple brushes in there. There we go. So I believe that is a finished painting for tonight. So the footbridge um, during episode 12 of season 24. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I'm definitely digging this one. It looks so bright. The, I think it's supposed to be a sunset. Yeah, I guess it could be a sunset or a sunrise. It's really yellow for a sunset as it is, but oh my gosh, this, like Bob's attention to detail with like, hey, we should put some white on top of this bridge. Um, I mean, it just pops, it pops. And so like looking at mine compared to his, yeah, it's bright, it's bright. His is a little more blended or subdued. It almost turned purple in there instead of pink. Um, but yeah, I'm digging this. 
this is this is gonna be fun tomorrow. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited. So tomorrow's uh, broadcast will be sent to YouTube and Facebook both. Um, I did invite my Facebook friends to join in, uh, but I won't be able to respond to them because I'll be responding to um, my students on in Upper Bound in our Zoom link. So, um, yeah, I am really excited for this. The oil looks great. The acrylic looks great. Um, in fact, here's the acrylic right here. So you can see them side by side. So yeah, I am jazzed. I'm jazzed for this. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming by Catopia tonight. I do hope that you found some peace and some joy and some freedom on this canvas. And like Bob always says, God bless.